here at Sebring, sitting in one of the airplanes that I've admired for many years. This is the Bristel, and we're going to talk about not so much the airplane, but what's in the panel. So we're going to come around and have a look at that in just a moment. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with John Rathmel. John, tell me a little bit about what we're going to be talking about, and then we'll start getting into some of the detail. Hi, Dan. Well, what we're, we're going to be talking about today is IFR flying. So with the, some of the new medical changes, you see folks sort of veering back towards, I'd like to stay in a, in a new airplane, but I, maybe I don't want to spend $600,000 like some of the competitors. So we've got a kind of a way that we might be able to keep them in their IFR plane now that they have that shot at the medical back with the new medical reforms. We're looking at IFR and LSA, how about that? So you're gonna make this new thing work. There are people that are saying this is gonna be hard on LSA. I don't agree, I think that the bad news mostly already happened and that what, what we're doing now is just sort of moving ahead with it. Yeah. You're just giving another reason for that. Exactly right. That's and very I, good. I agree with you, Dan. We've talked about this a lot of times. You know, LSA is pretty durable and it's here to stay. And I think you'll find when somebody wants something new, a lot of folks in a sort of budgetary position that feel like they want something new. They want the best they can get. And suddenly there's options out there that they may not have known about. And it's true, uh, there's some not very nice airplanes in the type certified space, but they tend to run at least double this airplane or significantly oh. more than double. Oh yeah. Sure. Triple, quadruple sure. even. So this is a serious money saver, even though it may not be a brand new one by yourself, might be out of the reach of some people. We've got ways to address that too with a share program. Yeah. We'll touch on that. but. For those that maybe sold a Bonanza or something else that was 20, 30 years old, they've already got the cash to afford a brand new thing like this. This uh, airplane is an excellent example. The customer that bought this airplane had a King Air before, and his uh, objective was to be able to continue to fly and really enjoy it uh, post-retirement. Sold his King Air, and he said, John, you know, really get me into an airplane that I can still practice IFR with. I want to continue to uh, keep all my, sh my skills sharp. So give me an airplane that I'm comfortable with, with an extra nav, an extra com, and a capacity to, to basically fly IFR. And now there may even be a chance for us to let them file IFR as well. Excellent stuff. So, you know, I've been in a King Air a couple of times, and they're usually got a loaded panel too, but you bet. I don't think they've got anything over what's in this one. No, so, this is pretty cool. So let's have a little closer look at the panel here. Sounds great. All right, John. Uh, now we've got the camera positioned so we can see the screens here. Let's talk about the equipment that you've got in here and what's great about this stuff. Okay, so what we're looking at is a Garmin 625 with a... Uh, That's this part. GMA 245 audio panel and a backup radio. Uh, the, the customer that wanted to uh, utilize this aircraft always wanted to have a second backup radio. So on a Garmin G3X 10-inch touchscreens, on the left-hand side we have the 465 unit, which also allows you to have XM radar and weather in conjunction, there's a GDL 39 in the back. Ah, and the okay. G GDL 39 gives you that ADSB non subscription capacity, but the G3X is so cool that it'll allow you to blend the two types of weather. So you'll get a blend on your weather page. If I split it and slide over to the weather page, as we just turned it on, you'll see here it says waiting for data. But down in the lower left-hand corner will give you the, the format. And on the ground, of course, the ADS-B doesn't really register. So when you get in the air, you're looking for your XM and your ADS-B. There's lots of different places to learn more about FM, uh, a, uh, XM radio and ADS-B weather options. That's not really what this is about. It's just to show you the that- The point is you have those capabilities on this airplane right, right now thanks to the GDL that receives that information for and then sends it to the both Garmin screens. Right. But tell me about these Garmin screens a little bit. What, okay. what For those that aren't totally familiar with G3X, sure. what does this deliver to you on two screens, John? Well, the way the way it's set up for two screens is that you, you can have your mapping on one side, you can have your uh, PDF on the other, and ba basically, as you watch this- Primary flight display, primary you mean flight, by that? Primary flight display, I'm sorry, PFD. So as you, as you look at the HSI, you've got uh, uh, speed, airspeed and alt, altimeter on the other side. You can inset windows. It has a, a broad spectrum but, uh, of, of uh, av aviation information it can display to you, including you can operate the radios from the upper left-hand corners and your transponder. So, so it, give, give us a small demonstration, change sure. change a frequency for us or something. Okay, basically anything you want to change, if it's in blue, you just reach up and tap it. 
and it'll bring up a screen to allow you to change it. You want to go to one, two, three, four, and enter. So no more dial twiddling or any of that stuff. Unless just you bang, might be bang, in bang. turbulence, Dan, what happens then? Okay, so, so what happens then? We go bouncing at, around too hard, you can't even hit those buttons So accurately. let's go to one, two, three, five. So now we just go to one, two, three, five. We roll it with, a, with this uh, outer button down here and we roll in two, two, three, five, enter, and now it's in standby, ready to go. If you want to transfer it, it couldn't be any more simple than just pressing the transfer. And so that was the effect of the color variation then. Right. One is the one you can change, one is the one you are using. That's live, exactly. Really cool way to save some money for those of you who are, who are kind of budget conscious. If you bring up the monitor button, you can listen to the frequency in the second standby position and while you listen to that frequency as long as the primary frequency doesn't the, no one speaks on that frequency you can hear it if someone speaks you get a three second delay uh, for your ability to uh, stop hearing the, what the person's saying on the primary frequency and after that three second delay it feeds back in with whatever you're listening to on the second frequency so you can kind of get by with only one radio if that makes sense ah okay so this particular... So that radio is all part of the G3X yes, system. Sir. This radio over here is a backup or a secondary system yeah. to that one. Or, yeah. or it can be the primary. It, it's not like it's lesser, but it's a, an additional radio. That's right. In this case, the remote radio is actually radio number two, and that lives in the back of the plane underneath, underneath there. And the uh, other radio is number one, is the primary, and that primary radio, actually, we have a, a control head up here if you're using two radios. If you're gonna go IFR, as a customer you know, indicated, he always wanted to have a backup radio in the panel. So yeah, that, sure, that's, that's real nice. You, you lose communication in IFR, you got a problem, so. Exactly right. Uh, so having a second complete separate system is, is a useful thing. I, you know, we don't wanna get into total prices here, but um, roughly speaking, what does a setup like this cost in this airplane? Our top equip equipment package is roughly $28,000 and that gets you dual G3X screens. You've got uh, an, basically an intercom built in and the, the primary radio. If you, as you begin to add on the additional radios in the radio package, you can just look at the Garmin pricing. The way we do it, Dan, is we just have you look at the current Garmin pricing and that Garmin pricing matches our pricing. There are people that will come to you, I'm sure, and say, well, wait, but I've read or I've heard, more likely, that you cannot have you cannot operate a light sport aircraft in the IFR environment. And I don't believe that to be an accurate uh, thought, and I'm interested to hear how you respond to somebody who comes up and says, well, but I've heard, and, right. and what I just said. Well, it's a qualified yes that you can do it, and uh, the way I usually begin to address it, it, it with almost anybody is, if I were to ask you, Dan, can you fly IFR in a 172? The answer is yes, but with an asterisk, because as we both know, not every 172 is IFR. Right. But it can be, but it may not be. And who's the ultimate determining factor of that? And that is the, the pilot. So you got to address, and, and of course the FAR. So you got to address FAR 91205. Your aircraft has to meet the standards That's for some minimum equipment. Minimum is what that equipment. is. That's yes. right. So you got to go to FAR 91205 and make sure the aircraft matches that minimum equipment. Which is not a particularly long list. No, it's, it's not an overly long list. And it's dream. basically a round dial requirement. It, so you have, we didn't we didn't even touch on those, but you have a few round dials. That's right. That's part of this. As backup instruments. Make right. it right, because what if right. these three screens both go dark, right. you're on an approach to landing, and what's something ne happens. And then what's next? Take your airplane, you've got three full GPSs with ADHARs and, uh, and reference system and if you consider the EDHAR system that's built into the autopilot, uh, the 350, if you press a level button, the airplane will automatically level itself regardless of the IMC conditions or in instrument conditions outside. Right, which is a great backup. They didn't have that when I got an instrument rating that's a exactly thousand right. years ago. So it talks about how much further on the cutting edge we are now even with LSA. But again, coming back to your original question, we got to meet the requirements of 91205, and the pilot has to be current and qualified. And if you want to have put an it, instrument certificate and be up to current with that. Exactly right. And then you've also uh, got the, the capacity. Of the, there was a uh, letter that came out from the FAA that allowed them to continue to, to train in LSA, even if it's an SLSA. But here's where the, one of the glitches is. If, you, if you're able to have the airplane certified experimental, 
if you're willing to have the airplane certified experimental, then you are able to determine and meet the requirements of 91205. And in that case, the, the operating limitations can be changed to match IFR because otherwise there's, there's other kind of engine limitations, different things when you're doing certified SLSA. And we weren't really going to talk about the difference between SLSA and ELSA, but to go IFR, you have to kind of go down this path. It doesn't mean experimental. Of the ELSA path. That's correct. Okay, so let's touch on that just for a moment. SLSA is Special Light Sport Aircraft, fully manufactured, complies with ASTM, is not really certified, it's just accepted by FAA, and you can do lots of things. Right. All the things that we all know about in this space anyway. To do IFR, you really need to go ELSA to, right. to be able to have the exact equipment on the minimum equipment list and to get the limitations right. that, to allow it. That's correct. Because and, every S, every LSA has, both it has to comply with the ASTM standards, but it has to have a um, an operating limitations letter that you're required that, to have with you and that sort correct. of thing. And, and that says what you can and can't do, basically. And, and as other manufacturers have done before, and when you change that over from SLSA to ELSA, the operating limitations letter that came from the factory is now replaced by the new, the new one. It gets a new one from your local uh, from the DAR uh, from your from your local FAA. The, 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 yeah, the FISDO. Well, the DAR will approve the one that you send into the to the local FISDO, and then the FISDO approves that. Okay. Yeah. So an ELSA now. This doesn't mean you got to like start building a kit or anything. Right. It is. It means experimental light sport aircraft. And yes, that was intended as a kit, but it is not at all like experimental amateur built, That's where correct. you actually have to build 51% of the airplane and all correct. the rest of that. You don't have to build anything. That's correct. But after you do that, you can change equipment, you can do other things, That's correct. and you can get training to maintain yourself. That's correct. And most people don't realize that it is also possible to come back to SLSA once, and you have to come back to the exact same specifications as the airplane was built from the factory. And you if you have, haven't changed anything. If you haven't right. changed anything, it has to be exactly as it bolt came from the factory. Bolt copy. Exactly right. right. But for those folks that we haven't managed to answer every question for, and there are certainly more, tell us how we find you guys on the web, John, so sure. that we can contact you and get sure. more information. And we'll put it up on the screen for Please everybody. Please reach out to us at bristelaircraft.com. You can, uh, our contact information is there. You can reach us anytime there. Okay, very good, John. Well, thanks to that review of this, this has been a question that's come up frequently, and there's some a lot of uncertainty. I feel like we've dispelled it. I hope our viewers did as well, John, but thanks very much for that. You can find lots more about Bristel and all the great airplanes in the affordable aviation space on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining John Rathmel and myself here at Sebring.